Welcome to the Jungets Games update vlog for November 2019. Today I'll be discussing quite a few different things, including several updates, as well as the shifting shelf and my upcoming schedule. Now, before we go into all that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to directly support the channel and the creation of future vlogs like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways with which you can help out, and some of them have pretty cool perks, like voting on a couple of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's now go into the update section, and as always, I'll have a very brief Patreon update. Uh, the campaign's been going for many years at this point, and this was still a really good month with 15 new people adding in. So I uh, really appreciate all of that extra support. Uh, there was probably about 10 people who dropped off, but still, that is a net positive, and it's really great to see. Uh, so now let's go into some more updates, and the first one is actually also a little bit about Patreon, and that has to do with a friend of mine, John Perkis, and his YouTube channel called Actual All. Now, he's been running his YouTube channel for almost the same amount of time as I have, and he is right in the middle of a big Patreon pledge push because he is trying to do this full-time, and it's really difficult doing that, as I'm sure you've heard me say many times throughout the years. Now, his content is pretty different than mine. Uh, he does reviews that are really well thought out. They're written uh, out as opposed to being off the cuff like mine. They're funny, and he puts on wigs to play a bunch of different roles, and he also covers a lot of family and party-style games, which is something that I really don't do. So I think John puts out great content, and if you are familiar with his channel, then please consider throwing him a dollar a month or maybe something like that. Uh, if enough people do that, then that can really help him out trying to make this sustainable. Now, if you haven't heard of Actual Law before, then I invite you to check out his YouTube channel because it really is great. All right, let's now move into the second update that I'll be talking about today, and that has to do with my impressions vlogs. Now, in the last update vlog, I discussed the uh, the thought that I had of breaking up my impressions vlogs into smaller videos. Uh, for the last year and a half or so, I've talked about all of the new games that I played uh, each month, and I did it once a month. So sometimes I talked about like five games, and sometimes I talked about 12 to 15 games, depending on how many new games I was able to play. Now, I decided to split that up into three and four game chunks, and I've now put out, I think, three of those, and overall, I think it is a success for a couple different reasons. Uh, the first reason is because it makes those videos shorter. I think two of them were 40 minutes, and the next one was 30 minutes, so it's easier to digest. And also, from a search engine perspective, it lets me put all of the names of the games in the title of that video so that they're much better to search for. I found myself trying to find an impressions vlog from the past, and I type in John Gets Games, and then the name of the game, and sometimes it's like the third item down on the list, uh, and it's just uh, really hard to find that way, so hopefully it's going to help out. Now, uh, one interesting thing that, that I've noticed is that the view counts have certainly been uh, significantly lower. Um, for the last year and a half, like I said, I've done these monthly vlogs, and in general, they would crack 3,000 views after a week or so. Um, some of them would get up to like four and a half or 5,000 views if I talked about particularly exciting games. Now, the three that I've put out this month so far, uh, two of them got to about 1,500 views, and one of them last time I checked, did not even crack a thousand views. Now, on the one hand, that might make you think that this is a failure, <laughs> right? Because uh, those uh, numbers are certainly a lot less than they were before. But that was also one old vlog's worth of content wrapped up into three different vlogs. So I can only assume that maybe more people are seeing the fact that there's just three or four games, they glance through them, they decide they're not interested, and they don't watch it. Whereas before, if it said, you know, I'm talking about these three games plus eight more, they want to click through to see. And it wouldn't surprise me if uh, a lot of those people just instantly stopped watching the video, even though it made the view count look bigger. Uh, so I don't really take this as a negative. Of course, I would like those numbers to be higher overall, but I think I'm going to keep doing this. And that's in large part because, well, I've enjoyed talking about less games in those videos and doing them about once a week. That lets me talk about the game when it's still fresh in my mind, whereas sometimes I'd play a big heavy Euro and then three and a half weeks later, I'd go to talk about my initial impressions and I'd have to open the game back up and look at the rules to remember how the basic mechanics work. So honestly, that's not going to be a great first impression if I kind of forget how the the game works that many weeks later. So uh, yeah, I'm going to keep trying to do this in the future. Hopefully the view counts pick up, but even if they don't, I think this is a better way to cover these games overall. Let's now move on to the next update, and this one has to do with a live Q&A vlog that I am finally planning on doing this month. I've talked about doing one of these for about four months now, and I keep saying, uh, I'm too busy this month, but I'll do it next month. And I said that over and over again, because realistically, I've been very busy with uh, both of my jobs, but mostly John gets games over the last few months. Um, now, I've decided to finally make this happen. It's going to be on uh, November 26th, and I've picked a somewhat arbitrary time of 2 p.m. Uh, that way, uh, people on the East Coast can see it after 
after work and people in Europe can see it hopefully um, before it's midnight or something like that. So I'm hoping to catch a lot of people for this and I would honestly like to do this like once a month or once every couple months because it is fun to do these live Q&As. I've only ever done one before and it was almost two years ago at the start of my big Patreon pledge drive that I did when I went part-time. Uh, now because it's been so long, I have forgotten everything about how to do a live Q&A. So I've put this off a couple weeks. Um, it's going to uh, happen, uh, I guess, on a Tuesday, I believe, and uh, I'll have time to like refigure things out. I still have my webcam and all that, so hopefully it should go uh, relatively well, but uh, we'll just have to see, and overall it should be fun, and I anticipate probably doing it for one to two hours, depending on how many people actually show up. Uh, so yeah, uh, I guess uh, mark that down on your calendars. I can't commit that it's absolutely going to happen, but I really will try to make that happen, and I'll try to figure out how to make it in YouTube where it can like pop up and you can say set a reminder. I see other people do that. I'm just not sure how to do that, so obviously I have a bit of research to do to figure out how to do this again. All right, the uh, final update that I want to talk about is a little bit uh, personal. I guess it's one of the more emotional ones, but I do want to say um, that I have been uh, off and on having some pretty rough times with uh, the workload that I've been having with Jongets Games over the last, well, several months, but it came to a peak a couple weeks ago. Uh, in particular, I put out a playthrough for pret -a and I uh, published the video and then found out, like, um, half an hour later that I'd made a pretty significant rules mistake in that video. Now, for some reason, that game took me forever to make that video for. Um, like, it was like um, 12 hours of raw recording, and by the end of the day, after I published it, I was up to 22 hours on that video. And then to find I made this big mistake, I just kind of cracked, honestly. It, it was really rough. I, I took the video down, I, I contemplated refilming it, but I just could not do it. I had too much other stuff, my schedule was too impacted, and I emotionally just could not get there. I honestly, I, um, I cried a bit, I was just really, really upset, and I don't think it was necessarily Pride of Porte in particular. I think it's just um, a symptom of my ability so far to not correctly schedule things out. I keep saying yes to a little bit too many things, and it's, I'm really suffering for it, especially my mental health. Um, in general, I am naturally a happy-go-lucky, optimistic person, but I have been finding myself falling into some pretty deep, grouchy pits over the last uh, few months, and uh, in particular, um, a couple weeks ago, I had some really rough times. Um, I've been uh, trying to block off the rest of this year. I'll tell you right now that um, any new people who ask me to do videos before the end of this year, I, I just say no at this point. I'm like, I'm booked up until uh, January of 2020 because I need to make sure that I have, you know, my mental health um, at the forefront of things because obviously if I'm miserable doing this, then I'm miserable and everything and I make poor content and, you know, why even do any of this if I'm miserable? So on average, I'm not miserable. <laughs> in fact, I'm happy to say that for the last week or so, things have really uh, gotten better. Uh, I've been honestly trying to get more sleep. Uh, that's something that uh, Jessica, my wife, feels like maybe was uh, one of the issues going into that is that I would uh, kind of average about five and a half to six hours of sleep every night, which would make me irritable and grouchy. And then, you know, all this stuff would come into play. Procrastination would rear its head. And I've always struggled with procrastination, but it certainly got even worse. And of course, when you procrastinate, you get more stressed at the things you're not doing. So I'm trying to sleep more and I'm uh, obviously saying no to uh, more projects. So that's allowing me to hopefully just run through the stuff that I've committed to for the rest of the year. And then maybe try and go into 2020 saying yes a little bit less often to find a good equilibrium of, um, you know, income overall of quality content that I put out on the channel, and then, of course, you know, my sanity and my overall stress levels. So um, there really isn't any point to this, but I uh, I like being honest in these update vlogs about where I am because, you know, this is a, a one-person show. <laughs> I'm the only one who does uh, all of this stuff, and, you know, these update vlogs are about the channel and me in that respect, of course, as well. So I think that's going to wrap up the updates for uh, this vlog, and that means we can now move into the Shifting Shelf segment. Now, uh, as always, this is the area where I discuss all of the games that I have removed from my collection and all of the new games that have showed up over the course of the last month. Now, uh, recently I've switched this up to talk about the games that are going away first, and as always, I'm going to talk about all of these in alphabetical order. Now, it looks like I have removed eight games <laughs> this last month, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, walk through them. Now, the first one of these is Bloomtown, and I covered this one in an impressions vlog 
about two or three weeks ago or so, and it's a relatively lightweight uh, tile laying game that just got released uh, at Essen a couple weeks ago. Now, this game has Baron Park vibes, where in this game you place a tile, and the location you place that tile down dictates what new tiles you get to place in the future. Baron Park works the same way, but in Bloomtown, they're just square tiles, and you're doing city building, trying to have different colored buildings be adjacent in a variety of different ways. There's like four different scoring, different types, and there's a couple other neat mechanics in the game. But um, I think I talked about this in the impressions vlog, I was kind of struggling with if I want to play Bloomtown instead of Baron Park, and I still have Baron Park in my collection, and I ultimately decided I don't think it makes sense for me to have both of them, and I enjoy the polyomino uh, Tetris puzzle building of Baron Park more than the square tile placement in Bloomtown. So it's a fine game. I enjoyed the second play of it, and if you'd like to hear me talk about it uh, a lot more, then please check out the impressions vlog for that one. I think a lot of people are going to like this, but I didn't think it made sense to uh, stick around in my collection. Moving on, we now have Bosk. Now, I did a uh, Patreon voted on video for this one a couple months ago, and this, I guess maybe one month ago. Either way, this is a lightweight area majority style game with some pretty cool stuff going on. Uh, it's It plays over the course of a year, so you go through four seasons, and each season has its own mechanics. In the spring, you are planting trees. In the summer, you score those trees. In the fall, you have the leaves literally fall off of the trees, and in winter, you score up the leaves that are on the ground. So mechanically, I think it's really elegant. I just am not crazy about area majority style games. I think if I enjoyed that style of game, this would absolutely stick around in my collection because it's such a streamlined rule set. It looks beautiful out on the table as you're planting these trees and then the leaves fall off the trees. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on here in this game that plays in under an hour. It just doesn't really play to my preference uh, types, so I don't think it really makes sense to keep it around. Uh, moving on, we have Ecos. Now, I did a uh, playthrough for this one. I believe it won the Patreon poll. That was not a sponsored playthrough, at least not sponsored by the uh, publisher. And I also covered my impressions of this one a few weeks ago. Now, uh, in this game, everybody is simultaneously taking actions. It's got kind of a bingo-esque uh, mechanic to it where uh, one person pulls out a tile, everybody uh, does something with that tile, and there's a central world in the middle where you are adding terrain, adding animals, destroying terrain, destroying animals, doing all sorts of stuff, trying to get points. Now, I talked in my impressions of it that uh, pretty at quite length that I wanted to love the game, but there were some key things about the design that just rubbed me wrong. And since then, I did play it one more time. And after that play, I think I'm done with the game. Uh, I really like a lot of the aspects that are going into the game. I love the fact that it's simultaneous action selection. I think building out little engines with the action cards in front of you is cool. But the issues that I had in that impressions vlog did not go away with my next uh, uh, playthrough of the game. And I don't want to talk about it at length right here. If you're curious, please go check it out over there. But also, it just it just seemed like we were playing through the game. I just did not feel super engaged in that last playthrough. And when the dust settled, I kind of found myself walking away from it feeling like I just, there's nothing else there that I'm really interested in trying. So unfortunately, Ecos ends up being uh, somewhat of a disappointment for me. I was really excited going into that uh, game, especially the first time I played it. And ultimately, I, I guess it's just not for me. Uh, moving on, we now have Legendary Forests, and this is a game that I got from Yellow as a uh, press copy at Origins. Now, I covered my impressions of this one around then, so that was probably in August or so, and it's a cute little game where you're placing out little tiles, building out a forest with a variety of little colors, you're planting trees to score different things in that game, and it's the style of game where everybody places the same tile at the same time. So it's simultaneous action selection, and um, everybody gets the same random input, and you're curious to see who does the best with the output. Now, mechanically, the game is fine. I enjoyed my one play of it, but I never found myself going back to it. Um, it's certainly a rather light game. You know, it plays in about 20 minutes or so. And uh, for me, I don't really play those games all that often, so it has to be really strong, I think, to stick around in my collection. And the uh, game was fine. It was totally fine. I would not mind playing it again, but I don't see myself ever pushing to play it again instead of something else. So unfortunately, I decided to remove that one. Uh, moving on, we have Periodic. Now, this game was sent to me so that I could do a sponsored uh, tutorial and playthrough for it, and I did. I think it's a really neat game overall. You actually play on the periodic table itself, and of course, if you're curious about it, then check out the sponsored video I did for it. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a pretty lightweight game, and the uh, the decisions and the stuff that you're going into the game are not really suited to my preference style. Uh, this is a very family weight style game. Uh, what you're doing each turn is you are uh, activating one action and then collecting 
gaining action points, or you're spending your action points to do multiple actions, and you're literally moving uh, your figure around the periodic table in a variety of ways, trying to do essentially set collection, trying to uh, hunt down the different uh, elements to put your tokens down to complete the different sets of elements. So I think overall, it's a pretty cool game. And again, I was paid to make a uh, playthrough for it, um, but it's just not a game I found myself all that interested in playing with others, mostly because I generally play, you know, medium to heavyweight Euro style games. Uh, so this is a game I certainly would not mind playing again. Uh, I just, again, don't really find myself uh, wanting to pull it off the shelf and play it with other people. And my shelf space is really tight. Uh, if I had uh, a lot more shelf space, then this one would likely stick around, but I have to make some hard decisions with this stuff. All right, moving on, we now have Ragusa. Now, I did a sponsored playthrough for this one. I was paid by uh, both publishers for this one, uh, and I also covered my impressions of this one a couple months ago. Now, this is the second design by Fabio Lopiano, who uh, also designed Kalimala. Now, these games have significant differences between them, but there are also some similarities. In both of these games, you will place down tokens to take actions, and then depending on where you went, you might get follow-up actions on other people's turns, or your own follow-up turn to get extra actions out of the things that you've already done. Now, in Kalimala, that had to do with a little token stack, and you could get up to three uh, or, I guess, two additional actions. And in Ragusa, it is hexagons, and you could get up to five additional actions as you play stuff down. Now, I have both of these in my collection at this moment, and after playing Ragusa a few times at a variety of player counts, I think I've just decided that I'd rather pretty much always play Kalimala. Now, a big part of Kalimala is area majority, or kind of uh, a majority score, and in general, I'm not crazy about that, but I feel like the action mechanics for Kalimala are just tighter and more interesting. Uh, Ragusa is a very uh, free-flowing game. The rules are quite streamlined, but it's also an incredibly consequential game where you might um, make a decision on your first turn, and you're only going to take nine turns in the game, or ten or eleven, depending on how many people are playing. And that might be a bad uh, a mistake, and you might have just lost the whole game because of that mistake on that very first turn. It seems like things are a little bit less uh, consequential with Kalimala, and I think the overall design is just a little bit more my style, even though it does have a bunch of uh, majority scoring, which I'm not super crazy about. So I'm going to keep Kalimala probably for the very long term because it's a super cool game, and just talking about it right now makes me want to go play it again. But unfortunately, I think after playing Ragusa a few times, it just doesn't really deserve that place in the collection alongside Kalimala, and I would definitely pick Kalimala over the two, unfortunately. So let's move on to the next one, which is Roll for Adventure. Now, this was given to me as a press copy from uh, Cosmos, the publisher. I played this one once, and I covered my impressions of it a couple months ago, and I thought it was a cute, uh, fully cooperative die-rolling game where you are trying to balance a whole bunch of threats that are coming in. You're also doing some, uh, uh, I guess, resource balancing. Your dice are action resources, and you spend them to go out and onto a variety of spots on the board, and you only get them back when those spots fill up. So you might have situations where you you have to do inopportune or inefficient moves to unlock a thing so that other people get dice so that they can roll more dice on their turn. Now, overall, I thought the game was totally fine, but I also don't think it's one that I'm super jonesing to get played again. Uh, I would not mind playing it again. I know I say that a lot for these games that are removed from the collection, but it's a standard, you know, ticket to ride style box, and that takes up a decent amount of space in my collection. So I've decided I don't think this one's going to make the cut. Uh, lastly, we have Tuki, and this one is the same box size as uh, Roll for Adventure. Uh, this one was given to me as a press copy at Origins from Plan B Games. Now, this game has players in real time simultaneously building up these little structures to try and match a pattern that you reveal in the middle of the table. Now, the game technically plays up to four players, but there's only enough materials for three players to play. So if you play this one four players, then one person is kind of sitting out in each one of the rounds, although the rounds only last like 30 or so seconds. Now, I've played this one a couple times, and it was it was cute. I, I enjoyed the plays of it. It was uh, certainly fun trying to build these things out to figure out how you can counterbalance things and uh, leverage all of these different pieces to match the patterns. It was also cool to see how different people would to get the same pattern through a, a variety of different ways of matching it up. But at the end of the day, I have the game Dimension, and I just like that game way more. I've had that game for years, and that is also a simultaneous action, or I guess a simultaneous real-time game. It's competitive, it's pattern matching as you're building up this little pyramid of these spheres. The spheres have different colors, and every single round you're going to bring out different rules, and you're trying to match these rules in real-time against your opponents. And I've always enjoyed my plays of Dimension, and I just don't see myself wanting to play Tuki over Dimension. So unfortunately, that is the decision that I made. I didn't think it made sense to keep it with that large box overall. So Dimension was the one that I ended up deciding to keep. 
All right, that is all of the games that I decided to remove from my collection this month, but now we can talk about the eight new games that I've acquired. Uh, now, I've not played most of these. Actually, I've played a couple of them, but either way, the first one is Flotilla, and this is a new release from WizKids Games, and it's a pretty bonkers idea where you have a water world style setting where there's no more land and everybody's on these floating uh, crafts that are trying to live on them, and this is a Euro game that borrows a lot of inspiration from Concordia. Now, I love Concordia, and... So I was quite interested to try this game, and this game has this really interesting idea where everybody starts off as effectively ocean divers, and at a certain point you can decide to not dive anymore, kind of become a city-building aristocrat, and then you interact with the game in completely different ways. It's effectively two different rule sets overall, but they kind of work symbiotically. Now, I've actually played this one twice, and I'll be covering my impressions of it uh, very soon in the next impressions vlog, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore. If you're curious about it, then definitely keep your eyes open for that. Um, next up, we have Glenmore 2, which is a Kickstarter that I backed. Um, I enjoyed Glenmore 1 that came out like nine or ten years ago. Um, it was one of the first time track games where you have a track on the board and whoever is farthest to the back is going to take their turn. So you could go really far forward, but then skip out on a bunch of turns. And it's all about taking these tiles from the track and building out your own personal Scottish um, compound, essentially, trying to make whiskey and get points for doing a variety of things. Now, I never had a opportunity to own the old version, so when the new one went out on Kickstarter, I decided to back it because I enjoyed my plays of the old one, and I love time track mechanics. So I'm looking forward to giving this new one a try. Uh, moving on, we have Key Market, the second edition. Uh, the first edition came out, I think, back in 2010. And up until about three years ago, I never really cared about the key games. Uh, those are uh, all games with key in the name. They all come from R&D uh, Games, which is a publishing house from England. But then I played Keeper, and I fell in love with it. And then I played Key Flow, and I fell in love with that. So at this point, I am now curious to try pretty much all of the key games. I have played um, Key Flower, which I thought was okay overall. It was not uh, something that really blew me away. Way. But when this second edition came up on Kickstarter, I decided to back it so that I can try out Key Market. Now, this is actually the only key game that was not designed by Richard Brees, who also runs the uh, publisher, but I'm still really curious to try this game out. I have not had a chance to go for it. Uh, moving on, there is Miyabi, which is a new uh, release coming out from Haba Games. Now, I technically have a pre-production version. It seems like it's essentially there, but, you know, a little bit rough around the edges. And it's a uh, Kiesling game, I think a Michael Kiesling game, where you are doing some personal tiling to get a bunch of points. You're stacking tiles on top of each other, and I enjoy that kind of things in games, so I'm looking forward to giving that one a try. Uh, moving on, there is Pact, which is a new release from Iron Games, and actually they sent me a copy of this one uh, as a press copy. Uh, last year I went to Spiel and I bought Pandoria, which was their release then, and I really liked it. It was, I think, my uh, top 10th game of uh, uh, the last year, and I think because of that, the publisher noticed that I existed, and uh, they reached out and asked me if I wanted a copy of this game. Uh, now, this is a somewhat light set collection style card game where you actually can uh, steal resources from your neighbors, but then after you steal them, them, you effectively give them points back. I have played this one once, and I should be covering this one in the next Impressions vlog, so I'll talk about it more then. Uh, moving on, there is Rolled West, and uh, I actually talked about my impressions of this one a few weeks ago. So it's a roll and write style game uh, in the vein of Gold West, and uh, yeah, I, feel free to go check out the Impressions vlog to learn more about my thoughts on that one. Uh, moving on, there is Sanctum, and I just got this one like two days ago. It's the newest release from CGE Games, and it looks like it's a lightweight kind of dice chucking sort of engine building uh, adventure game that kind of feels like a uh, Diablo kind of setting. Obviously they did not get the IP for Diablo, uh, that being the uh, video game from Blizzard Entertainment. But I played uh, a couple of the Diablos 1 and 2 for years when I was younger, so I have a uh, soft spot for that overall theme, so I'm curious to try this one. It's currently uh, punched on my kitchen table, and I got about one-third of the way through the rules uh, before I fell asleep the other night. So uh, it's not because the rules were boring. I was just staying up way too late. As I said earlier on, I've been staying up way too late. Uh, so hopefully I get to try that one soon. And the last new game that I got is Sovereign's Chain. Uh, this is a new uh, release from WizKids Games. They sent this over to me at the same time as I got Flotilla. And I haven't tried this one yet. It looks like it's a pretty lightweight uh, card game as you're trying to do a little bit of tableau building in front of yourself. Uh, so yeah, those are all of the new games that I have acquired over the last month. Uh, there's quite a lot of stuff coming in. I think a big part of that is because Essence Spiel just happened, and uh, obviously a lot of publishers are trying to get these out to a variety of people. Although a couple of these were Kickstarters that I decided to back.
All right, let's now move on to the final section, which is the upcoming schedule for the channel. Now, uh, later on this week, I'm putting out a sponsored tutorial and playthrough for Town Builder Cavorden. Uh, this is a relatively lightweight uh, tableau building game where you build out buildings and uh, you get a bunch of points for this stuff. I've actually fully edited that one, but it's not quite ready to be released, so keep your eye out for that one. Uh, moving on, we have next week, which is week 46, and I'm planning on putting out an impressions vlog that week where I'll be covering Flotilla, Pact, and also Lighthouse Run, which is a game I got to play a couple weeks ago. And then I am also going to be putting out a sponsored tutorial and playthrough for Stronghold the Undead Game. <laughs> game, I guess. Uh, so Stronghold is a game that came out like 10 years ago, and uh, many years later they came out with an expansion called Undead. And now it looks like Portal Games, who is the publisher for this, is doing a re-release, and it's going to be a standalone version of Stronghold Undead, kind of wrapped up together. Uh, in fact, right now it's just off camera. You can't see it, but it's kind of taking up a large part of my uh, table. As soon as I finish recording this, I'm planning on teaching the tutorial for that one. So that one should be going live next week. Uh, now, moving on to week 47, uh, I'm planning on putting out two <laughs> Kickstarter videos in the same day, which I generally don't like to do. I don't generally like having three Kickstarters in a row, but sometimes that's just how this stuff works out. Uh, one of them is going to be Ducks in a Row, which is coming out from First Fish Games, which is actually the same company that did Town Builder Cavorden. Um, the Town Builder playthrough is for the fully uh, published final version of it, and Ducks in a Row is going to be uh, with a prototype. Now, on the same day, I'm putting out a playthrough for Alder Quest, and uh, that one is a kind of capture the flag one-on-one -on -one match three style game. It's got a whole bunch of stuff going on. I finished filming that playthrough already, but uh, that one obviously won't uh, go live for a couple weeks. Now that is, uh, I guess I'll probably also do a Games Radar vlog in week 47 as well, but um, the reason why that week is a little bit iffy is because that is when BGGCon is, so obviously things are going to be uh, pretty hectic overall, trying to get all this stuff ready in time. Uh, now moving on to week 48, I am planning on doing the live Q&A, as I mentioned, over in the uh, update section. So that's going to be on uh, the 26th, uh, so that's the start of that week. I'm also hoping to put out another impressions vlog, and then also a sponsored tutorial and playthrough for Cloud Spire. Now, I have had this game here for like a month and a half at this point. The publisher sent it to me and I said that I would get the tutorial and playthrough done as soon as I could, and it looks like that is going to be the first time where I actually have an opening to actually get that published. So I'm looking forward to jumping into that one. Uh, moving on, we have week 49, and I'll probably be doing another update vlog. That one will be for December. Uh, and I will also probably be publishing the uh, Patreon bonus uh, uh, video as well as the Patreon voted uh, playthrough. Uh, now, technically, it will be December at that point, and these will be the videos for uh, the month of November. But with uh, things being so crazy, I just don't think I'm going to be able to get either one of those published until the very beginning of December. Um, it's still going to happen. It's just going to be a little bit later than I normally like, and I don't know what either one of those will be because I haven't actually put out the polls yet. I should probably get around to doing that. Uh, but either way, that is a decent idea of what my schedule is looking like for the next few weeks. Things certainly might change overall. I'm really hoping to make that live Q&A happen on the 26th, but um, if there's a change to that, then uh, certainly maybe uh, pay attention to my uh, Twitter feed or something like that. I'll definitely make an announcement if I have to change that overall. So yeah, I think that's going to wrap up the vlog overall. Uh, I've talked about a bunch of updates, the schedule, a bunch of different games. Obviously, there is a lot of stuff going on right now, and there's a lot of stuff coming forward in the future, uh, going right into the schedule I just talked about. After that, there is a bit of a, uh, a holiday party rush for my other job. I try not to take too many shifts with them, but there's certainly going to be quite a few hours spent uh, outside in the cold doing some uh, Christmas party setup uh, for that, while I also try to work in the John Gets Games content that I'm hoping to get done. So uh, yeah, that is going to bring us to the end of this one. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.